Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you are having a fantastic day. If you're new to the channel, my name is Parker Nierenstein, and this is Vehicle Virgins. It is an absolutely beautiful day today. I think it's a nice day for a little drive, but oh my God, my E63 is the dirtiest I think it has ever been since I've taken delivery. So I think I'm gonna need to get that fixed up. The matte paint shows dirt so intensely. That is disgusting. It looks like it has a disease. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Good morning to the Lambo and the Ferrari. Now guys, I've been thinking. I took the wing off of the Lamborghini to change up the look, but you know what? I'm missing that wing action, so I think we gotta install it back on. Check this out, my exhaust has actually melted the plastic in the rear diffuser on this side, and a leaf has stuck to it, lovely. I do appear to be having a problem, however. There's a button right here to open up the engine bay compartment uh, down by my left foot, and when I click it, you hear the activation, but it doesn't actually unlock the compartment. Not sure what's happening. Turn on accessory power. Go ahead and click the button. And come around to the back of the car. And it won't open. Damn it, that is necessary. <laughs> That's like the first step to putting the wing on the car. I know a lot of you guys are wondering what the status with the house is. Where is the house update? So I'll give you a little bit of information. Finish the driveway, that was a fabulous project, but it was step one in understanding that remodeling a house takes more time and is more expensive than you could ever imagine. Now everybody says that going in, but it's not until you actually experience it firsthand that it sets in. I talked to an architect who went throughout the entire house, sketched out the initial floor plans, what it looks like now, and a new design uh, to totally change up the layout of the house makes it look a lot more modern. It's kind of segmented and in a weird shape, but with an open floor plan, radically changed the design. One of the biggest things, however, that I didn't fully internalize is what it would actually be like to live in the house while it's being remodeled. If I totally wrecked the floor plan, took out a bunch of walls in the interior, then there would be dust and everything the entire time, coming home to basically a fully wrecked house for the next year. I will be honest, guys. I bit off a little bit more than I can chew with the entire project. You don't really realize until you've been living here for a while how big 6,300 square feet really is and how much seven acres is. In order to remodel the entire thing and make the property look the way I wanted, it's an extensive process. So we are taking it slow so that I have extra money. I'm not living paycheck to paycheck. I don't want that level of stress in my life. Added a couple things to touch up the house and I found some pretty cool stuff in the backyard actually. Decided to paint the front door a different color. I like the wreath, although it's no longer Christmas, so I probably gotta take that down. Got some plants for the exterior. Did some little landscaping right there in the front. I'm not sure how much I love this planter box, but we'll see. Removed some of the stakes for Vehicle Virgin's vineyards because, uh, well, I'm not likely to actually have a winery. Built this little fence area to keep Ketchup in so she can run in the backyard, although the one thing that I have learned is that we are in coyote territory, and apparently coyotes can jump like five or six feet, which means they can jump over that massive fence, which is pretty scary and means that I can't just leave the dog outside alone. One thing that is super fun about having large amount of acreage, my friend Joe is super into hiking, and the other day we walked all the way to the top of the property. It's a little bit of a hike, but it actually goes up and over that hill. Then there's a big plateau there with an amazing view. So it's kind of like my own private hiking area. Got some outdoor seating for hanging out when it's nice out. This is my sexy propane tank. Never had a house that runs on propane, but uh, it ran out the other day, so I had to fill it up before all of my heat and everything that runs on propane decided to run out. Right next to that is my tire graveyard, although most of these still work, so thankfully I've got some leftover tread when I run out on my cars. I have been loving this grass front yard area. I've actually used it for several reviews. I don't know if you guys noticed, but the Ferrari Portofino review, I actually just did right on this. Hill. Makes a pretty sweet backdrop. Back there, the mountains, love it. 
Here is my pool and avocado shaped hot tub. I don't use this nearly enough. I definitely need to, especially as the weather starts warming up. Still kind of wrapping my head around the whole home ownership thing. It is so different than renting. I loved renting because when anything went wrong, it was the landlord's fault and you could fix it instantly. With home ownership, when something goes wrong, well, it is my problem to deal with. The house is also so big, so many of the rooms don't get used. I kind of feel a little bit of buyer's remorse because of that. So I have been contemplating the idea of getting additional roommates just to fill up some space, have a little bit more camaraderie in the household, but I'm not quite sure what the full game plan is yet. Now I am going to finally take care of the 458. I got a flat tire while filming actually a TV show. I can't talk about it yet. It's a pretty exciting opportunity that hopefully in the future, well definitely in the future, I'm gonna be able to talk about. But unfortunately, while driving, I picked up a screw in one of the tires. So I've got AAA coming over. They're gonna pick up the car and we're headed to Avant Garde Exotics. There is the screw. Hopefully it's just far enough away from the sidewall where patching this tire is actually going to be acceptable and I don't have to replace it. If it was punctured into the sidewall, I'd have to get an entirely new tire. It is still holding air for now, so I'm gonna try to drive it down the driveway to the tow truck. Hopefully nothing happens. I got it towed from the shooting location uh, for the TV show to my house. Uh, and it actually hasn't lost any pressure since then. So we did pour a little bit of water on it and it was bubbling just a tiny bit, but I don't know if somehow it resealed itself when I rolled it into the garage. All right, well normally AAA is super fast, like 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and I just got an alert saying it's gonna take two hours for the truck to come, so that sucks. I have like the weirdest suspicion that the nail didn't go all the way through. The weird part is the tire lost pressure, but now it's not losing pressure anymore, so I don't know what's up. I don't wanna pull it all the way out though, cause I don't want it to go completely flat on the wheel and then damage it as I'm trying to get it up onto the tow truck. All right, new plan since we have about two hours till the tow truck arrives. I'm gonna start pulling this out, and if it appears it's just a really, really short screw, which I kind of doubt, then we might be good to go, cause I don't know why it's not losing any pressure, but if it seems like it's actually pretty long, then and we're gonna push back in. All right, well, as I started to pull it out, it started hissing pretty bad, so definitely punctured the tire. Well, since apparently I've gotta wait 10,000 years for the tow truck to come, I think it's time to get the E63, there it is over there. <laughs> Going on an off-road adventure tomorrow, Alex has got his second set of wheels, actually the stock wheels for the Raptor that he's going to be putting on to save those beautiful Vorsteiners from any scratching or damage. Should be a fun adventure. Well, <laughs> that was a fail. Does anyone else actually enjoy cleaning their car? I don't know what it is. I hate doing laundry, I don't like cleaning the house, but cleaning my car, there's just something special about it. And right in the middle of drying the car, in the beating sun, which is very much less than ideal for water spots, I hear the tow truck has arrived. Oh boy, that was a waste of time. All right, great, not quite sure what to do here. I guess I'm gonna put it in the garage. The tow truck guy's honking at me. There is nothing in the world more stressful than loading this onto a trailer. Look how low the rear diffuser on this car is. It makes it almost impossible to load it. Yeah, look, shorter than an iPhone, sideways. Here we go, pulling up to avant-garde. We got Edmund's beautiful Murcielago outside, this lovely blue Perfomonte. I love that color on the Perf. Check out this wide body GTR. There she is, pulling up. All right, see now this is what we needed, these race ramps. Mitch is saving the day right now. And that makes it easier. All right, that right there is the problem. So the Aperta comes with titanium lug nuts, this one right here, and compared to a steel one, it's unbelievable the weight difference. Dude, Marky Mark, long time no see. Fist bump. Fist bump, what we got going on? Welcome back to the vlog. Exactly, you welcome back too. Oh yeah, yeah me too. <laughs> 
What What do you think the main job, of, Alex? What do you think the main job of a tensioner's job is to do? Create put tension, tension and it's not doing it. Right. So, <laughs> how do you fix you that? Have one job, tension, and you have to pull the entire motor for that. You do because you have to get the differential off. The differential used to live like right here, uh -huh. and the timing cover. The fun part is in order to put it back together, we have to pull the cylinder heads up. Sweet. Because you can you can cheat the timing cover off to kind of look around and see what's going on, but you can't cheat put it, it back, back on. on because you'll mangle the head gaskets. And then you see this little rubber O-ring? Super zoom. See that little O-ring? That little O-ring lives underneath like that. And to try to like slide that cover back on and keep you'll, that O-ring in position, up, yeah. let's just say 100% it's not going to happen. And then you put this car back together, you throw it in that thing, you fire it up, and this thing starts leaking oil mass. What did it, uh, what kind of symptoms did it exhibit to know that the tensioner? You, you can hear the tensioner rattle when really? it broke. You can hear it going out of it. Mercies, man. Not the most reliable. You know, this is kind of an anomaly. We've seen a couple broken ones, but we've seen battered motors that causes that. Gotcha. But never, never that one. It's usually one of the guide shoes or something that'll crack. But, you know. All in all, they're pretty robust though. I mean, if that thing can stay together. That's true. Yeah. Edmund drives that pretty hard and it survived. Minus clutches. We just put one in. <laughs>
Look at this. <laughs> There's part of his tires. What the? <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah, those are properly destroyed. Alrighty, the Ferrari is back in action. About to head back to the crib. Oh, it sounds so good. I'm hoping a couple miles of driving and this TPMS sensor should go out. Shout out to Mitch for fixing the tire last minute. Seriously, dude, avant-garde exotics always hooking it up. To the two fans with the FRS that I just met at the gas station, you guys seriously rock. I love seeing and meeting you guys in person. It is the most awesome, rewarding experience, seriously. These lime green Jeeps kill me every time. All right, back at home. Now that we are back home, we are going to take the tune off of Alex's Raptor. The tune has been absolutely awesome for that boost in power. If you guys didn't see the video where we did a zero to 60 comparison before and after with the VF tune, I suggest doing so. It was a fun video, but we're gonna take it off because he's taking it in for service. The great thing about the VF tune is it's incredibly easy to remove. Same process as installing it. All we need is a laptop with the software that comes with it from VF, a little dongle to attach it to the OBD2 port, and we can remove the tune so it was like it was never there, and the car won't get flagged in the system. Depending upon how well you know dealerships, sometimes if you show up with a tuned car, they can, well, completely void your warranty. So to avoid that, we're bringing it back to stock. Well, we only own one PC and we need a PC in order to take the tune off. So we're getting that charged up. And while that is happening, round two of washing the car, because as I left halfway through the car wash process, it got water spots and soap spots all over the entire thing. So basically, it was completely useless. And Alex set me up with this dope foam cannon. It's actually a pressure washer that was super cheap and came with a foam cannon. We've used this thing so much. It's actually been freaking awesome. Check this out. is finally clean. This thing has been dirty for so long, I almost forgot how good it looks when it is all nice and touched up. Alex is over there getting the truck ready for tomorrow's off-road adventure in California City. This is actually gonna be our biggest off-road adventure yet. We got Malcolm coming out with his Raptor. We got Chris coming out with his family's Raptor. Then of course, Alex's Raptor as well should be a crazy adventure. The laptop should finally have enough charge so we can detune the Raptor. Alrighty, laptop charged up. Open up VF software. Well, we've determined this is actually the slowest laptop in the history of the world, and it's taken longer to actually get to the point where we can get to the software uh, than actually uninstalling the software on the Raptor is gonna take. All right, we got the program open. It's plugged into the OBD2. We're on accessory power with the car off. All right, it's detected the ECU type. Program ECU. There comes Malcolm in the other Raptor. We literally have so many Raptors, I thought that was Malcolm, but it turns out it's Chris. All right, three years later, the laptop is finally starting to work with us, we think. Well, as it turns out, we don't actually have the correct stock file for the Raptor. It would have been just one click of a button, waiting about two minutes, and then it would have been all done. But we've contacted VF, they're getting us the new updated file, and we should be good to go by tomorrow. A lot of things didn't quite go as planned today, but you know what, trying to make the best of it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like always, please browse the channel and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you next video. Bye,